about my head too much. Entomophagy, is, is, is that right? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, so entomophagy. It's quite an ugly word, but so I don't really like using it, so I prefer just edible insects. Okay. But it literally means to consume insects. Okay, to consume insects. And it's, it's, it's an umbrella term, right? It's yeah, not exactly. just specific insects, it's a lot of different... No, no, it's literally like, you know, worldwide so insects. Sure, being sure. The wide spectrum of all insects all over the world. Okay, and so, I mean, I guess the next best question to follow on from that would be, why are we even talking about entomophagy or eating edible insects? Why, why all of a sudden this, you know, this idea that's come to, to Western culture, why edible insects? Yeah, good question. I mean, this conversation would have been a lot different like 10 years ago, or even like, you know, five, like even the past couple of years, even the past 12 months, um, there's been like a massive shift in how people think about food and what they kind of consume on their daily life. And there's kind of like this food, almost like food enlightening period that's happening right now. So people are not just concerned about the food, they're, con they're concerned about where it comes from, the impact it has on the environment. And so right now you're seeing, we're seeing this huge trend in alternative proteins. And so right now in the news, there's a lot of hype around, or should I say interest a lot in um, plant-based foods. So like, you know, the big brands out there. Um, and so, but besides kind of plant-based foods, there's also, you know, fungus-based, lab-grown meat, and then also edible insects. And so all these other alternative proteins are kind of like rising in popularity with the rise of the youth and their opinions around sustainability and ecological design and impact on the environment. So there's a huge current kind of resurgence in like, you know, awareness of the key issues that are happening and facing our planet right now. Yeah, I think that's really key. I mean, obviously a lot of what my blog is talking about is climate change in general and environmentalism. And it'd be great to talk more about sustainability and sort of the environmental impact mm. that insects have, edible insects have on our planet and producing them because ultimately, you know, the current state that we're in at the moment with agriculture, rearing livestock, it's very, very inefficient, mm. very, very unsustainable for our population, which is growing beyond 7 billion now. So could you tell me a little, little bit more about the yeah. sustainability, the environmentalism impacts? And yeah, sure. I mean, you have just like, especially in the West, there's just, like, the average person is increasingly concerned about the intensive meat industry and all the knock-on effects it has from like land use to water use to CO2 emissions. For example, if cows were a country, they would be the third biggest greenhouse gas emitters worldwide in between America and India. So just cows by themselves they emit a huge amount of carbon and methane and greenhouse gases overall. So these alternative proteins, especially edible insects, are rising in popularity because of their environmental credentials. So they use a fraction of the water and land needed as well as consuming a fraction of the feed. So they have a really good optimizational rate of feed, of feed and water conversion, which reflects its credentials of being a great alternative to traditional livestock. Sure, but I mean, obviously it makes sense, doesn't it? Because insects are a lot smaller than rearing traditional livestock that we use in Western culture, mm -hmm. so, so, such as cows and sheep and, yeah. and the like. However, because they're a lot smaller, is there an issue with the percentage of protein in the insects? I mean, how comparatively, how much more would you need to eat if yeah. you consume them from yeah, no, good question. No, it's, yeah, no, I, t I totally understand. I mean, well, firstly, percentage-wise, an average cut of beef is around 20% protein uh, compared to mealworms, which is uh, almost 55% protein. So kind of a huge difference in the percent-wise. Unlike beef and other mainstream meats, it, you eat the whole insects. So exoskeleton everything. So not only do you get the protein, but you also get all the micronutrients, such as calcium, potassium, and all the essential uh, amino acids. So there's minimal waste. Whereas if you were to eat a cow, and not only are you investing time in rearing, so several months to years to actually make this cow you also do need a large percentage of it so from you know bones and other such things so the conversion rate in that sense is very efficient yeah i think that's a very very good very key point to, to continue with that is that the waste aspect of agriculture in general at the moment is very very inefficient it's very wasteful generally mm -hmm. if you're talking about you know traditional methods i think the idea that when you're eating insect entomophagy in general as you said you're eating the entire bug right the entire insect mm -hmm. so nothing goes to waste yeah um, but i mean in terms of a, a production side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what are the wastes involved if you're if you're going to produce mm -hmm. on on mass insects comparatively to ag agriculture because obviously all the methods involved with agriculture obviously it needs huge warehouses i mean these huge yeah. sort of techniques to keep these cows you know you see some horrible videos don't you i mean of how cows are kept in, mm -hmm. in huge barns and everything and mm -hmm. how I mean ethically it's horrible isn't it and I guess that raises another question doesn't it about the ethics of, of rearing insects yeah yeah I mean, how, so how would you do that well so I guess if I answer the first half of that question sure. first so the actual how you actually rear insects compared to the conversion between traditional livestock so basically insects basically are as you know tiny and so that allows you to have great versatility in how you farm them. So what's being done in many nations is basically vertical farming in which you can have, you know, warehouses, small, small
small places and literally you can farm insects in, in a tiered system in a small environment uh, and you can basically just grow them vertically in like you know multiple trays uh, have them stacked up and so they're extremely efficient in that sense and they love to basically uh, mealworms love to live in close, close proximity and swarm with each other so capacity can be optimized in that sense where compared to a cow you literally have you know this huge thing that needs a certain amount of room i guess this leads perfectly on to um your company then and we're talking about real, real sort of specifics here yeah. like vertical farming so tell us about your tell us about your company is it is it biopia is that you pronounce it Bio, oh, that's one way to pronounce it yeah so Go it's on. actually based on the irish gaelic word meaning food for life so a bit like tomato tomato biopia biopia you know sure biopia then tell us tell us, yeah. about, tell, tell us about it the, the, the fact you you mentioned about um eight billion Mm-hmm. Is the conservative projection of the market in the state market. It could be, I believe so, yeah. It could be that, and that's a conservative one. Obviously, there are certain countries in the world that are already used to and already adapted to eating, mm-hmm. not adapted, but they're very used to eating insects already as part of their culture. Mm-hmm. Am I right in thinking that those are the countries where the populations are growing the most, therefore... Is it really going to spread into into Western culture as much, or? Yeah. Um, so currently, two billion people worldwide eat edible insects, and you're spot on. Most of that is being cons- most of those insects are being consumed in uh, non West, non Western regions of the world. Um, so, for example, like you know, like Sub Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, um, and but edible insects, a bit like saying eating mammals. You know, you don't really say that. You say, "Oh, I eat, I eat beef, I eat pork." So much like that, you don't really say, "I eat edible insects." It's like, "Oh, I consume mealworms or crickets or grasshoppers." What might be depicted as you know a traditional food in, let's say, Vietnam, uh, would be seen as something weird in Nigeria. So all these different countries have different connotations because of the diversity of edible insects in the West. Um, yeah, it's nowhere near as popular as it is in other regions of the world. But due to this current food enlightening that's happening right now, especially with young people, um, people are increasingly concerned about the impact the food has on the, the environment. And so with that, these foods are being re-looked at in a different light. So for example, um, there's a, Mintel did a sample pool into people in the UK and found out that uh, 43% of young males in the UK are, are interested in eating edible insects as a high protein meal. And so that's 43% of young males, almost one in two. Um, so quite a, quite a huge number of interest. Um, and obviously that interest can, you know, it can be from moderately interested to very interested. But that shows that is, that is reflecting the current trends in where things are heading. And as things proceed, I imagine those interest levels will only get greater. Perfect. And so I, I hear you have, a, you have a gift for me in trying to help me Yes, I do. Great insects into my diet. What, what, what exactly are you giving me? So I'll be giving you a range of samples from whole mealworms to powdered mealworms, in which you can use and I guess explore uh, the versatility uh, and taste of mealworms in your diet for a week. Um, so I think it'll be quite a fun experiment, and I hope you're looking forward to it. I, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm quite. It's, it's quite a daunting task to eat insects for the first time. I mean, yeah. I'm personally, I eat few meats I'm, I'm not yeah. I haven't really gone onto the ve- vegan diet or anything mm. really I mean I mainly eat chicken uh-huh. however the idea of suddenly changing to insects is quite daunting what, what kind of tips do you have for me or for anyone really I mean to? yeah I mean really I mean like it's extremely versatile uh, very mild taste so it allows you to use it in a range of foods so for example the powder you can use a powder in you know um, a range of snacks so if you like cookies muffins you know sweet treats to really kind of ease you into the idea of eating insects. Um, it can be made into uh, the powder. You can use it uh, to make uh, bread, also pizza dough. So it kind of like, it gets rid of the, the cognitive bias you have and the issues that you have around the, the idea of insects. Um, and then you can have the whole insects, you know, use them as, as uh, garnish sprinklings, make, you know, uh, beef burgers out of them. Okay, I think, I think what you mentioned about the powder is probably definitely my first first best bet I think to sort of think? ease my way into powder and then move on to maybe the whole insects on day two or three would probably be yeah why not be a good idea thank you so much for having me here today it's been uh, it's been great to find out about your bio bio products um, and I'm just excited to get on with my diet now yeah I'm sure well, all the best I'm looking forward to catching up with you later sweet thanks very much welcome